You have described that AI is a plat, plat, uh, platform shift. And what, is, what does that mean, question one? Where do you see that shift going in the next few years? And importantly, the third part of my question would be fast forwarding a few years, five years. What's going to seem obvious in hindsight that feels less clear today? You know, first of all, um, it's great uh, to be back here, uh, Larry, and it's, um, uh, I had a chance, in fact, yesterday when you put out the letter uh, to kick off the forum and read it. And, um, and in there, you sort of had this one line of uh, really, I think, when it comes to AI, the real question in front of all of us is how do you ensure that the diffusion of AI happens and happens fast? I mean, I think you had that line of how do the models, the data, and the infrastructure <clears throat> spread more evenly to create surplus everywhere, if you sort of think about it. The, the way I come at this is not that... Um, this has always been the arc of computation, right? You can sort of take it in the last 30 years or the last 70 years. It's always been about can you digitize artifacts on, about people, places, and things, and then build analytical and predictive <clears throat> power, right? That's what the mainframes did. That's mm -hmm. what the mini computer did. That's what the client server error did. That's what the web error did, the mobile cloud error did. So it, like, it, it depends, irrespective of which paradigm or platform, it has been one continuous arc of saying, let's make better sense of this world um, by reasoning about it in digital form, because in some sense, once you have these artifacts in digital form, you can use a more malleable resource like software, right. um, which doesn't have the same type of, you know, I'll call it uh, <clears throat> marginal cost economics associated with it, that allows us to then build more insight and more, uh, more capability. And in that context, AI, I would say is of the same class, at least, like the web or the internet um, or mobile or PC or the cloud, or, and maybe even greater. And so to me, right now, where we are is, you know, let's take just what's happened with software engineering, right? Which is one, you know, is knowledge work. Um, you know, you could say it's elite knowledge work. Mm -hmm. It started off, uh, you know, in fact, my own belief in this generation of AI and its capability uh, really got built up when I first saw GitHub Copilot do code completions, right? So for the longest time, we had the dream that if you're a software developer, can you predict the next sort of word or the next uh, line of code? Uh, and suddenly it started working with these models. Uh, then you said, okay, if I can do that, then can I actually go and bring back you know, the flow for a software developer by going to a chat session and asking any question, and it comes back with answers that then uh, you can use in your coding flow, right? So that was the next thing. Then you said, well, if that's working, can I assign it small tasks? That was the agent mode. Uh, now you have <clears throat> complete autonomous agents where you can give it your entire project, right? It can work, uh, you know. 24-7. It can work for 24-7. I mean, it's still, we've got some ways to go for these things to remain coherent long time. But nevertheless, it's getting better and better. And interestingly enough, you look at it, uh, the software developer still is got a lot of agency in it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of still think that, you know, going and thinking of these as somehow living outside of the realm of human agency is probably not the right way to think about it. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.